Hi everybody, this is Andy from Med School EU. Today we're gonna begin talking about prokaryotic DNA and the eukaryotic chromosome structure. So we're gonna differentiate between uh, the, the differences and we're gonna take a look at some similarities of prokaryotic and eukaryotic DNA. So let's begin with prokaryotes. Uh, so prokaryotes have two types of um, genetic material inside their, um, their cells. And of course, they don't have a nucleus like we do in eukaryotes. Prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, so they just have their DNA floating around in the cytoplasm. So first, uh, let's look at, take a look at the nucleoid. We already know that this structure is called a nucleoid and it's kind of uh, super coiled it is double stranded um, circular single double stranded circular chromosome so it's just one chromosome as you can see here so if we were to just take this nucleoid and we were to stretch it all out it's going to look like this it's double stranded it is circular and it is a single chromosome that's typically what the prokaryotic dna would look like if we were to unravel the nucleoid and uh, of course this uh, this is a uh, plasmid so this is called plasmid and it's again a circular uh, double-stranded structure kind of similar to the nucleoid but much smaller and their significance is they contain antibiotic resistant genes uh, and these genes typically code for proteins that would be uh, helpful in um, antibiotic resistance. So this is why we always say that um, whenever you're taking an antibiotic, you must finish the entire course completely in, old, in order to kill off the prokaryotic or, or the bacteria. Otherwise, some bacteria will be able to survive and they will develop genes uh, that, or they have genes that are uh, antibiotic resistance that they will then pass on to um, their offspring. And their offspring are also going to have these antibiotic resistance genes. Then, and then that uh, initial antibiotic that we used is not going to work. And this is causing a huge problem in the pharmaceutical business today. So again, uh, if we were to take this um, uh, nucleoid, and this single circular double-stranded DNA, and we were to coil it, so this is called supercoiling, super coiling it would look something like this and this is pretty much the same as what we see on in the nucleoid and so that is just the typical structure of prokaryotic dna uh, they still have the same bases a t c and g because it's a dna it's not an rna molecule and it is double stranded um, so this is when we say when we get the replication going, it's going to be, uh, it's going to create just the one replication uh, f uh, bubble. However, in eukaryotes, the process is a little bit different in terms of the replication. And if you would like to know how replication and the rest of the central dog dogma of biology occurs, I encourage you to check out um, a couple of previous videos in this playlist in order to get a sense of uh, how um, the central dogma of biology works. Now, looking at eukaryotic DNA organization. Again, we do not have plasmids, but we have a uh, nucleus. And nucleus uh, contains our genetic material. So this is the DNA that we have. And this specifically this dna typically that is how it's it's going to look like under the microscope we won't be able to see it because it's decondensed so it's decondensed however recall that when the cell is going through mitosis or it's going through meiosis the chromosomes are going to be condensed. They're going to look something like this, and this is why we will be able to see them. So we have multiple chromosomes, and this would be the condensed version that could be seen under the light microscope. And 
um, what, what the significance of this is, is that under light microscope, we can see the condensed microscope. However, when they're decondensed and the cell is not going through any sort of division, uh, we won't be able to see it because they're just going to be transparent. They're decondensed. They're not uh, coiled in this sort of manner. And again, eukaryotic DNA, they have multiple um, chromosomes uh, compared to prokaryotes that have just a single double-stranded uh, chromosome that, that's circular. However, in eukaryotes, typically we have multiple uh, number of chromosomes as we have here. In humans, of course, we have 23 pairs, 23 pairs or 46 singular um, chromosomes. So now let's zoom in on the eukaryotic chromosome because there are, there are plenty of structures that uh, we actually must go over and cover. So of course this is our DNA and uh, it is going to be coiled and here we could label that this large structure is the chromosome. So we're going to go from the macro to the micro. So starting with the chromosome, that is the way it's uh, shown here uh, because it's completely um, condensed and that's the most condensed version of our genetic organization. Then uh, if we were to unravel it uh, or if we were to zoom in on the condensed chromosome, this uh, structure here is called the solenoid. So it's solenoid. And the solenoid uh, has various features here. So if we um, take a look at the DNA, it's going to be wrapped around. And the DNA that is going to be in between these octomers, this is called linker DNA, linker DNA, because it, it links in between the different uh, octomers here. And um, this structure that composes the octomers, this is going to be a histone. So this entire thing is called a histone. And this, so out of the histone octomers, because there's going to be four histones on each side, which will make an octomer. So there's going to be eight subunits of, uh, or eight histones. And what they make up is called a nucleosome. So it's called a nucleosome. And this nucleosome is just DNA wound around a core of two molecules each of, of, of these histones. And histones would be, um, we could have H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. So there's th these are dimers. These two are dimers. And these two are tetramers. So uh, here we're going to have these subunits wrapped around the um, we're going to have the DNA wrapped around these histones which make up a structure called a nucleosome. And uh, now each of these nucleosomes are connected via linker DNA. And these little yellow um, structures right here, these little yellow ones, there's another one here, another one there. Uh, these are uh, called H1 histones. So they're H1. And it binds to the nucleosome and, and the linker DNA causes the nucleosomes to uh, form this coiled structure and make the solenoid. So that's the importance of H1. H1 is not originally part of the octomer. So this, all of this would just make up the octomer that then makes up the nucleosome because nucleosome is octomer plus DNA. The H1, which is another just another subunit of uh, an, another type of histone, it's going to bind a, kind of on the side of the linker DNA and the nucleosome, and it's going to promote the folding into the structure called the solenoid. And of course, once the solenoid is formed, it's going to make up the chromosome.
This uh, concludes our lecture on the DNA structure of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In the next video, we're going to take a look at uh, genes and the regulation of gene expression.